On the western side of Borca is an interestingly named little landmark, the Ash Gardens. Van Richten's guide doesn't have much to say about it, only that it's a vast region burned by a wildfire, and the Pretorius family's debtors are burned alive, and their ashes are scattered about that region. Now that's the kind of lack of detail that we thrive on here at Lunch Break Heroes. Welcome back to Lunch Break Heroes. Today we're fleshing out the Ash Gardens, a part of the dread domain of Borca. But make no mistake, you can take this desolate, burned out wasteland and drop it into any setting that you like. So buckle up and let me tell you about the place. Now if you don't want to watch this video over and over and over again, head on over to Patreon and get the written version for just as little as a dollar. For one dollar more, you get the beautiful full color version to download and keep forever. If you happen to catch our Sholomance video, you may be familiar with the name Pretorius. It was the name of a particular student there who caused a wildfire back when he was a kid. Caspar Pretorius was only six years old when he started the fire that devastated the lands that became the Ash Garden. But it wasn't an ordinary fire. The locals who witnessed it called it the Shadow Fire, as it was made up of black flames that marched steadily outward, consuming everything in their path and couldn't be put out by normal means. This Shadow Fire raged for four days and killed hundreds of people before the Rainmaker Society showed up and put a stop to it. Now all that remains of a once beautiful and verdant landscape is a smoldering hellscape full of ash and blackened, twisted trees. Nothing has grown there in the 20 years since the event. People who lost their homes to the Shadow Fire eventually settled in the surrounding areas. If your party talks to enough of them, they might be able to piece together enough clues to lead them back to Casper Pretorius. And God's help the Pretorius family if word gets out that their son was responsible for the calamity. And God's help the person that tries to blackmail them with that information. Now you can't have all those deaths in one place and not have some effect on the area. In the case of the Ash Gardens, the souls of those who were killed have melded into a gallows speaker, whose stat block you can find in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. This malevolent and violent spirit can be seen wandering the area day and night. For every 10 minutes that your party spends wandering in the Ash Gardens, roll a d20. On a 1, they encounter the gallows speaker. If not, roll again 10 minutes later. This time on a result of 2 or lower, they encounter it then three or lower, and so on until they either encounter this thing or they leave the Ash Gardens. If they kill the Gallo Speaker, it reforms again at dawn and the process repeats. Every month on the night of the full moon, things get really weird in the Ash Gardens. Under the silvery light of the moon, the tragic events of the Shadowfire play out again and again. Spirits manifest and run for their lives, only to be consumed by the heat and the smoke of the phantasmal black flames. But don't be fooled into thinking that this is just an illusion or a memory. The flames can hurt, they can kill, and the spirits of those who die in this way are assimilated into the gallows speaker. No resurrections. So that's the 10,000 foot overview of the Ash Gardens. Zooming further in, there are several key points of interest that you can tie into your game. The first area is Gambler's Ruin. Like I said earlier in the video, the Pretorius family doesn't take too kindly to those who can't pay back their debts. Anyone who gets in too deep at the Pretorius Casino and can't pay their way out is burned alive. The ashes of those unfortunates are taken to the large hill in the middle of the Ash Gardens and scattered. The winds in the area take the ashes in random directions, scattering them evenly throughout the Ash Gardens. The family believes that this prevents a congregation of angry spirits that would otherwise rise up and march against their estate. Now, if vengeful spirits were a concern of mine, I'd stop burning people alive, but maybe that's just me. When your party first arrives in this area, they'll find a member of the family and one of the guards getting ready to scatter a cart full of urns. A lowly commoner can also be seen trying to offer them copper and silver coins for the ashes of his wife. If your party doesn't interfere, the coins are refused and the ashes are spread. Otherwise, your party can either 
buy the ashes for 15 gold or get them by passing a DC 15 persuasion or intimidation check. Or kill them. That's, that's also an option. Our next point of interest is Cinder Lake. In a dramatic bit of irony, Cinder Lake has always gone by that name. Now it just happens to be a bit more fitting. Where once crystal waters lapped against rocky shores, now black fire ebbs and flows. The waters of the lake evaporated during the shadow fire, and now all that remains are the last remnants of the dark flames that destroyed so many lives. Within the swirling black mass, a host of magmen have found their home. No one knows how many there are, but everybody's clear on one thing. Stay away from the shoreline unless you're exceedingly well prepared or suicidal. On occasion, you can see a member of the Rainmaker Society and their apprentices on the shores of Cinder Lake both studying the flames and gathering reagents for their own spells. Next, we have the Ever Burning Oak. Before the Shadow Fire, for as long as anybody can remember, lovers from all over Borka would come to a glen at the heart of which stood a mighty oak tree. They'd profess their love for each other and carve their names into the tree trunk. Miraculously, the tree wasn't destroyed entirely during the Shadow Fire. It was forever warped, however. It burns continuously with its boughs holding glowing embers which rain down each day and set fire to the trunk of the tree. The fire will blaze for hours until it eventually fades and the process repeats all over again within a day or so. The tree is actually a mute treant and it's cursed by the dark powers to relive its torment again and again in perpetual silence. It's cursed to neither move nor speak to anybody. Your party can remove this curse and free the treant by casting Remove Curse on it. Whoever does so is rewarded with the last of the treant's flaming boughs, which has the statistics of a flame tongue scimitar. Just 20 minutes away from the Pretorius estate is the ruins of a pagoda where the Pretorius children would play under the watchful eyes of their mother and governess. Unfortunately for everybody, it's here that the story of the Ash Gardens really began, and all with a childish prank. During the night, it's here that you'll find the ghosts of the fire's first victims, who have yet to be absorbed into the gallows speaker. They've been hiding from it since it first formed. They're really good at hide-and-seek, probably because they were 12, 9, and 7 years old when they died. These are the cousins of Casper Pretorius. Naturally, they're afraid of strangers, but when they see that your party aren't the gallows speaker, one of them gathers up the courage to come and interact. Each of them has the stats of a ghost, and none of them believe that they're dead. If you stick around long enough, you'll also find the ghost of their au pair, Miriam. She has the stats of a poltergeist and comes back to usher the children back home at the end of the night. If she sees any living being at the pagoda, she'll become hostile and attack. If you're here during the full moon, you get to see the start of the shadow fire. In addition to the ghosts of the cousins and the au pair, Faceless shades that represent Casper and his mother are also visible. They reenact the fateful night over and over again. Casper, a little boy of six, pulls on his cousin's ponytail. His mother grabs him and drags him aside. Her yells are incomprehensible, but her body language is unmistakable. The shade of Casper pounces and stomps his foot, and the black flames erupt around him and his mother, spreading ever outward. So why might your party find themselves here in the Ash Gardens in the first place? What might they do here? Well, here are a few ideas for you. A dryad has tasked you with freeing the ever-burning oak. A widow has asked you to scatter her husband's ashes at Gambler's Ruin so that he may rejoin their son. Casper is haunted by visions of his cousins and asks you to destroy the pagoda entirely so that they might move on. A wizard has asked you to gather samples of the fiery water in Cinder Lake. A member of a noble family has fallen into debt with the Pretoriuses and is going to be burned alive. They've tasked your party with getting their family member back. A rival family has asked you to gather proof that the Pretorius family is responsible for the Shadow Fire. They've asked you to visit the Ash Gardens on the night of the full moon to gather this proof and bring down the Pretorius family. Let me know how your adventures in the Ash Garden go down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and come back here for all of our future videos.